Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Lizon from Lifestyle Integration. Today we're addressing the important question and that is, should you avoid chlorinated water or chlorinated pools? The short answer is yes, you should. Chlorination comes along with a lot of benefits, but it also has a lot of negative side effects. And it's important that we understand exactly how it works in a simple way so that you know how to best amplify your health potential by avoiding and minimizing exposure to chlorine, as well as the other halogens that you see here. Now, the way that this works is if you look at the periodic table of the elements, you come across this column called halogens. And you can see here that you've got fluorine on top, then chlorine, then bromine, and then iodine. iodine. This is important to understand because there are interactions between these four halogens. And the one that we really want for body function is iodine. Now what actually happens in the body is that in addition to chlorine and fluorine and bromine having health problems, documented health problems, when in excess, the problem is that those halogens block the function of iodine. And that is a huge deal. When you consider how important of a mineral iodine actually is, it is the one of the most critical minerals for thyroid function. Now, when I work with a lot of people, a lot of their problems are a lack of energy and fatigue, and the thyroid is almost always part of that, whether it's a clinical hypothyroidism or a subclinical, subclinical where you can't quite sort of see it on the blood tests, but it's an important function. And if iodine cannot be used, even though it's present, because it's being blocked by these other halogens, you will have energy and thyroid problems. And that is one of the main reasons why we need to minimize our exposure to chlorinated water, both in a pool and in the water that we drink. So when we recognize that these halogens, chlorine and fluorine and bromine, cause health problems and block iodine, we need to take some common sense action steps. One of the most common sense is not to necessarily avoid all pool exposures, but to minimize it. Swim in a salt water pool if you can, or get out into a creek or into the ocean, or minimize your time in a pool, particularly if your body is sensitive or you're having energy problems. The second thing you need to do is rinse off immediately after you have that swim in a chlorinated pool. Now some of the other practical considerations that you can do to help maximize your body potential when you are exposed to these things is to make sure that your nutrition and your body composition is very, very good. A nutritional balancing program, and you can find links to what a nutritional balancing program is on this video below it down through here. A nutritional balancing program makes sure that you have addressed your deficiencies, your excesses, your imbalances, and your toxins. And when you do that, the halogens that are coming in, like chlorine and fluoride, should come in, not be needed by the body. And when you have proper elimination channels, have that move through the body and back out again. And along those lines, another very important tool that people can use to minimize the effects of chlorine and the other halogens that are harmful is to use a near-infrared sauna. When we consider the amount of toxins and chemicals we're exposed to, and chlorine is just one, we need to ensure that we're eliminating this toxic load that we're increasingly being exposed to. And a near-infrared sauna, when done regularly and consistently, is well documented to help with the detoxification of the body, in addition to so many other benefits. Near-infrared benefits, heat benefits, dementias, heart disease, you name it. You can look at other videos that I've done on near-infrared saunas, but it is a very important tool to help with the chlorine exposures. And last but not least is obviously filter your water. Check your filters though, because you need to make sure that the filtering system that you use is adequate. It's not just chlorine gas they use anymore, it's chloramines, which don't break down as easy. You used to just leave the water out and the chlorine would evaporate. 
Check your filters. Make sure that they're at a level and a quality that can actually remove the chlorine from the water. And the other benefit of having the right filter is it'll obviously get out a lot of the other nasties as well. So there you have it. Everything you need to know about chlorine and why you need to minimize your exposure and how to maximize your elimination of that. I'm Dr. Todd Lies. I'm from Lifestyle Integration. Subscribe to our channel. We've got heaps of information. We try to get out a video at least once a week. Until next time, keep well.